Hey everybody, welcome back to Demo Days. We're playing the demo of a very, very special game. Yeah, and in the spirit of us playing so much Dragon Quest XI this fall, we thought we'd go back and play a little Dragon Quest VIII demo. Yeah. We've actually talked about this demo on the channel before, but uh, we'll just dive right into it. Story mode. <laughs> Fairberry. Fairberry. With British spelling. Um, uh, whoa. <laughs> Immediately after playing so much Eleven, this looks rough. <laughs> I did not expect that. Master Rylus is the fellow who taught that accursed doom Magus his magic. He might be able to impart some information to us about the whereabouts of that devious scallywag. I want you to seek him out, Eight. I'm sure he lives in this town. Okay. The action button. Oh, the camera's inverted. Ooh, can you go into the options and change that? And maybe to widescreen? Or would that fuss up our capture? Uh, no, I don't think so. Screen settings. Why? Exciting. Um, camera. Camera, yeah. But yeah, it says it's not inverted. It is. Well, it's all relative. Yeah. Is I that better? Whoa, what the? What? It's not widescreen. It's... It, 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 like, just pulled it in or something? Yeah, it's all, it's, like, stretched now. I don't understand how, I don't know how it works. Maybe okay. we can't do wide or something. Okay, well, that's fine. It is what it is. Yeah, this isn't inverted, Squarenix. Um. So, what were, so, walk, take me back to, like, the time, the year, the place. Okay, um... I think it was... Okay, I was still in uh, junior year of college, maybe, yeah. 2004, uh, second semester. Okay. Was, whoa. whoa, whoa, where did that guy go? Um, Demo version? Yeah. Still a little glitchy. Yeah, I mean, uh, this was a revelation for, like, how good it looked at the time. Because, like, you know, coming off of Dragon Quest VII, you know, PlayStation 1 game with chunky, chunky sprites and bad poly... You know, well, not bad polygons, but pretty yeah, rough. Yeah, like, Dragon Quest is a bad-looking PS1 game. Yeah. Where this I mean, is, like, it, a really good-looking PS2 game. Exactly. And, I mean, like, to see a Dragon Quest world, like, fully realized in 3D like this with a movable camera behind your back... Yeah. I mean, it's, it was like a dream come true for a Dragon Quest fan at the time. Pity, pity, pity. Oh, sorry, listen to me. That jester who was here kept saying that, and it's become a bit of a habit. Um, yeah, just to explore towns, you know, in this, this way. Um, and, like, to see, like, oh, this is what a bully looks like. You know, like, to see... Yeah, those Akira Toriyama archetypes from, you know the series roots like everything um stop and, and the game that level five the uh developers had made directly before this was uh, dark cloud 2 yeah um, which, which was also a, a looker yeah hey it's me oh yeah you can't beat a nice cold drink of water after a night of the town What's that? You're looking for someone? Why don't you go to the pub then? There's nothing <laughs> the barmen don't know about this place. Can you go down the well? Yeah, so. yeah. absolutely. 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 Yeah. Ooh, a treasure chest. So, so yeah, and it, it uh, and on top of looking Stop really- Stop hitting that button, dude. 
on top of looking really good for the time, it preserved all of the series' roots. You know, as opposed to like Final Fantasy, when it went 3D, it it uses an opportunity to change everything. Whereas, guess, yeah, uh, you know, Dragon Quest has stayed the path. Even Dragon Quest XI, which changes more things than I'd like, s- stays truer to the series' roots than, um, you know, a 3D Final Fantasy does. Yeah. I think it still looks good. Sorry, everybody, I, I'm sick again, so I might have my voice break a couple times and keeps getting like a rat in my throat. A rat? Yeah, it's like, it's like a weird little like, feels like there's almost like a rat tail. Oh, speaking of which, look in your pocket. I don't know if anybody can see that. There's a, the hero for... You can. You yeah. Ah, see, ah. He has a little rat. Yeah. Are you okay, dude? Yeah, it's just like a weird <laughs> rat tail in my neck. <laughs> uh, everybody knows what I mean, I'm sure. Um, let's see. I mean, like, this is like a classic, you know, like, breaking barrels, and I mean... Like, I don't think Dragon Quest is, like, you necessarily need all of these things to be a Dragon Quest game, like Breaking Barrels, or... But, like, I think it is, like, it's like, you know, this Dragon Quest Chocobos, you know, like, some of the things that, like, are just mainstays of the series. Yeah. And it, Bullies and bunny girls. And, and because it's, like, so much like a warm blanket, it's like, is you want your chicken soup made the way mom used to make it, uh-huh. you know? Have you heard about the fire we had in town the other day? Guess what? People are saying it was awesome. Oops, that's a bit of a hot topic. Better not talk about it anymore. <laughs> I sh- should I do that with my mustache? Oh yeah, Curl you should it. start smoking a pipe. I do enjoy that um, in Dragon Quest XI, when you destroy people's pots and, and barrels in front of them, they look shocked. Yeah, they're like, hey! <laughs> there was one like in Dragon Quest XI where I went in like an old lady's bedroom, and she was in there, and I oh, opened you up took the, out like her garter belt, yeah, belt. garter belt, and yeah, she's like, that. "Hey, that's mine. <laughs> it's private." <laughs> Haven't you had enough, Mister Calderasha, sir? I'm sorry, but I've got a business to run. This uh, haphazard fortune telling of yours is costing me a fortune in free drinks. What? My fortune selling? Haphazard? Are you a complete fool? Have you shaved the mustache? Dan Avidan. <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you something. Some haircut. All fortune telling is haphazard. What do you expect? Anyway, so what if I saw it? So what if I foretold the fire? If I tried to stop it, then what? It would only have led to another disaster. That's what. I'm sorry, Mr. Kolderasher, sir. I don't follow. If you're saying you knew about the fire, shouldn't you at least have warned Master Rylus? Yes, poor Rylus. How many times I argued with the old man. I cannot believe he's gone. Hmm. Yep. Stuff going on in town. What? What is it? Yakov Shmirnov, Iggy. <laughs> you! Come, show your face to the great Kaldarasha. Yes. 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 I look how low res the texture on his face is compared to your heroes. <laughs> yeah. Quick, quick! Everyone come quick! There's a monster the in town! The are coming! The British are coming! Oh. Oh. Just come and see! The whole town's gone crazy! Funny, funny trivia. That's actually uh, me voicing that character. They hired me on. Yeah, back in... Uh, Two thousand four. Oh, must have been about yeah, two thousand. Well, I think they recorded that my audio in two thousand three for that part. Oh, okay. Um, Which would have made you seven. Yeah, so you can put it in the wiki. Okay. Uncredited. Yeah. 
Oh, and Bunny Girls, another staple. Yeah. I mean, it's like kind of like, yeah, like Bullies and Bunny Girls are like those two like iconic Dragon Quest NPCs. Um, and you guys at home can hear that it has that MIDI style music, uh, which in the full Western release was changed to the orchestral soundtrack, like fully orchestral. Yeah. Oops. Right, wrong. I keep it in the wrong buttons. Like it does actually have some different buttons than um, eleven. Yeah, and I bet, bet you can't sprint. <laughs> nope, I can look. Looking first person. Oh, I think he had to walk around for some reason. Over here? Uh, no. There, there's another staircase down the other way. I think. Back here? Yeah. Just keep going. Uh, hang a left. Go that way, down these stairs, right, yeah. Monster! Hey, how are you? Everyone's screaming and shouting in the courtyard! Do you know what's going on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> they found a monster? Why are you so calm then? Shouldn't you be panicking a bit more? Whatever. <laughs> you have the official voice of any silent protagonist on the channel. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, we have Yangus with us. What the? This ain't good, Gav. Come on. Cool. Look lively. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Mm, he looked at <laughs> Funny. Oh, it's hideous. Get out! Get out, monster! You're not welcome here! You know, and a big reason I suspect that the dialogue is so stilted in this is that the Japanese version was made without dialogue, and like spoken dialogue intended. Yeah. No voice acting. No, no voice acting. Same with Eleven, right? Uh, well, the Japanese version didn't have voice acting, but it was always intended, I think, for the Western version, too. So, like, I think that was built in the back end. So, it, you know, dialogue is just more naturally delivered by NPCs and, you know, just in cutscenes. Yeah. I suspect. Hey, it's the moon. It's made of cheese. Well, that was a fine reception. Don't they realize who I am? <laughs> Judging a book by its cover, don't they know it's what's inside the cover? You tell him, buddy. Yeah, you can say that again. What the hell is Yangus wearing on his head? Did you manage to find oh, Master hair. Rylus? <laughs> it's Guy Fieri. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to another edition of Dragon Quest Day with Diners, Drivings, and Dives. <laughs> uh, hey, did you manage to find Master Rylus? No. What? He's dead? Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, I mean, I think this looks better than most PS4 games. I suppose you know. there's no point <laughs> crying over spilt milk. I think this looks better than God of War, you know? Oh, yeah, totally. Um, seeing it now, I don't think you could do a simple HD uh, remaster without going in and redrawing the textures in it's HD. Still, yeah, because some of these textures are pretty low res. the princess and I, after all. He's the one who made us look so ridiculous. I had hoped Rylus might be able to help us locate him. But it seems... We'll just have to track Dormagus down by ourselves. With Rylus gone, we have nothing further to gain from staying here. Let's be on our way. Sure. Wait. Please Go. wait. I'm sorry to come running after you like this. It's just that I want... All right, sorry, I skipped that. <laughs> Oops. Oh, it's really low, so it's hard for me to hear. I dreamt about you. 
I dreamt that some people came to town with a strange creature. It was sort of halfway between a human and a monster. And monster. I dreamt that they could make wishes come true. A strange creature? <laughs> Are you referring to me? I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to be rude. <laughs> Not to worry. I've had worse things said to me today. You know, you remind me of my Medea. You're about the same age. I anyway, uh, you say you had a dream about me. Most peculiar. I'm sorry. I haven't even introduced myself. I'm Valentina, daughter of the great fortune teller Caldarasha. If you could just come to my house, I'll explain everything there. It's by the well, at the far end of town. I'll be waiting for you! What was she rabbiting on about? Come round my house, she says. Magnificent! <laughs> <laughs> I do like these characters a whole, whole bunch. She wasn't yeah. afraid to look at me at all! Not one bit! Oh, she reminds me of my Medea. We must give this young girl a helping hand. Right then, my boy. Go and find the house by the well and see what it is she wants. Hmm? Me? I'll wait here with the princess. We don't want to cause any more of a stir. Um, it is kind of, like, I, I think really, um, uh, interesting that they started I mean this is just the this demo is just the beginning of the game mm -hmm. um, and that you already start with uh, your with companions mm -hmm. uh, and just in a couple cutscenes it has established the relationship so thoroughly between you know the three I mean four if you count Medea the horse yeah uh, you know you don't know anything about their pasts but you can tell a lot about the relationship that uh, you know your hero character has to Trode, the goblin guy. Yeah. And and Yangus and Trode's you know quasi adversarial relationship. Oh, you can't save in the demo, huh? For some reason, I thought you could. Weird. Um. Yeah. I mean, like. I, I, not to like just do this as like a comparison to like Eleven, I, the, but I remember like when Eleven was first shown, I remember not liking the aesthetic as much as Eight's aesthetic, and it's really pretty similar seeing it now, but like I think some of that was like, like the characters did seem as interest, uh, as instantly likable. Yeah. Like Yangus, like you see Yangus and it's like, Everything you need to know about that dude, you you kind of pick up on. You know, like he picks his nose, he wears like a stupid hat. Yeah, he picks the food in the kitchen with his bare hands. Yeah, like he like drives like some red like <laughs> sports car thing around to like uh, restaurants across the United States. Um, um, <laughs> but I, you know, I, I see what you're saying. You know, it's uh, the eleven cast seemed to. At least for me, and it seemed like for you, didn't didn't take like we didn't take to them immediately. Yeah, and now, like I I think the eleven cast is probably more like complex characters than eights, but yeah, uh, on the surface, I think eight there's something like just in, like intrinsically likable about like seeing this protagonist, right? You know, like just something about his bandana. And like his goofy face, and like it just seems so fun, you know. Yeah. Whereas your eleven protagonist had like doofy hair and kind of a frown. Yeah. Like I mean, and I like him, but he's and like even like the color palette, it's more inviting, you know. Like your protagonist here is like this cool yellow coat with like a nice blue shirt and red bandana. It's like the three primary colors all right there on him. Um, and like in Eleven, he's wearing like kind of this like purple coat with like muted colors and um, yeah, 
you know, like there's just something so inviting about this game. Yeah. And I think ele- I that's not to say I like eight better than eleven. I like eleven more, but yeah, yeah like as to why, like I think so many people look so fondly at eight. Yeah, for sure. Ah, you came. I'm so sorry. I must have drifted off. How rude of me. I wanted to ask you a favor about this crystal ball. Crystal ball. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Perhaps I should start from the beginning? Of course. Let me explain. My father, Kalda Rasha, was once a really famous fortune teller. Lost treasure, missing people. There was nothing the great Kalda Rasha couldn't help people with. But then one day, he lost his powers. All of a sudden, nothing he foretold Just turned like out Miss to be true anymore. Hmm. It's probably because he stopped using a real crystal ball. This glass ball isn't... <gasps> Valentina, what is going on here? How many times have I told you not to touch my crystal ball? What? Aren't you that boy from the pub? What brings you here? Yeah. What are you doing here? I, uh, <laughs> yeah, well, I don't I, care. I, I, I'm sorry I said anything. I, re- I really don't I do care. I'm too drunk for this. You, but you can forget it. I do not need your help. I am fine as I am. I mean, this is so relatable from Kaldarasha's perspective. Huh. Like, how many times have you had too, like a few too many you come home and like somebody's like messing with your crystal ball? Yeah. Like your fake crystal ball. Yeah. Talking to your daughter. You know, like... Yeah. I think everyone... Everyone's been there. And you just, like, strut off upstairs. You know, wearing your hammer pants and your sandals. (laughs) Sorry about my father. But whatever he says, he's the one who's really suffering since he lost his powers. That's why I wanted to ask you this favor. Can you find him a crystal ball? One that's big enough to bring back his powers? Really? I should have said no. I'm sorry, no. everybody. This is exactly no. how it all happened in my dream. So far, everything's come true. I also dreamt that there's a crystal ball hidden deep inside the cave, under the big waterfall to the south of town. I suppose only the daughter of the great Kaldarasha could know a thing like that. Someone's full of herself. No, I like her. <laughs> you know, she's the, the you know. I I think there's so many charming characters in Dragon Quest. Like they're so, and it's and it's always a deft touch. You know, they uh-huh. don't they don't overwhelm you with. Um, You, they, they don't like um, like some characters that just kind of mug you and like give you their whole life story. Uh huh. Whereas generally in Dragon Quest, kind of need a light touch, you know, like just yeah. let it breathe, but give you enough to care. Let's see, where's the exit? We go the wrong way. Yeah. Um, that one doesn't go out to King Trode. It's the other way, the other exit. Where's that? Uh, to the left, and to the right. Everybody to the left, to, to the left. Past the burning house, out through that gate. And then I think we might call it for this episode of Demo Days. Demo Days. Demo Days. Demo Days? Secret of Demo Days? I see. I see. I see. You see. next time. See you next time. Hmm. Bye. Bye. It suddenly occurs to me that King Trot is supposed to look like Yoda from Star Wars. <laughs> How many years later did it? It's like, oh, it's Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>